Shut up and sit down. having a wonderful day so far hope you enjoyed another fantastic weekend of football although i could be saying that from a position of bias but let's get into it because we had some big matches some big results and some big upsets so the first one i want to talk about is uh, not necessarily a result but rather a story that is uh, finally culminated and that is rangers winning the scottish title the first time in 10 years after they went down to the third division went into administration got sold for a pound all the other things that happened to them. Um, Steven Gerrard's side went the whole season without even having a loss. So I think it was 27 wins and four draws was the uh, the final <laughs> final standing where we are right now. Um, they ended up winning 2-0 and uh, Celtic's 0-0 draw was enough to give them the title. So that means that when they play each other in the Old Firm Derby this coming weekend, uh, Celtic will have to give them a guard of honour, which must just be devastating for them. So, um, so yeah, so that was a big, uh, a big result in the world of European football. Um, moving on to another big result, we had the Madrid derby. Uh, Atletico Madrid won, Real Madrid won. Um, so this sets up the top of the table very interestingly. Um, Atletico Madrid were ahead after the 15th minute, all the way up until the 88th minute, uh, when Karim Benzema scored the equaliser. Um, so Atletico Madrid are still in first on 59 points. Barcelona are only three points behind them and Real Madrid are five points behind them. Uh, but Atletico Madrid do have a game in hand. So if they win that, they could be six points ahead of Barcelona and eight points ahead of Real Madrid. So um, it's not done and dusted yet, but it's getting very close in Spain. Um, Real Madrid did dominate the match. They had 18 shots to Atletico's 11, eight shots on target to Atletico's five and 61% possession to the 39%. So, um, but a very good result for Atletico Madrid, have we seen, as we have seen um, in the past with Diego Simeone, very well organised, very defensively sound, and it took until the 88th minute for uh, for Karim Benzema to uh, break the deadlock. So, um, moving over to the uh, to the Syria, let's see if there were any big matches there. Um, it was pretty much business as usual: Juventus, AC Milan, Inter Milan, um, and Roma all winning. So that means that the table, Inter Milan are six points clear of AC Milan, who are a further four points clear of Juventus, but Juventus have a game in hand, and then they are two points clear of Roma. So still relatively close in, uh, in Italy. Um, over to the Bundesliga, we had a, uh, a huge match in the Bundesliga. It was Bayern Munich versus Borussia Dortmund. Um, Erling Haaland scored two goals in nine minutes um, to put Dortmund 2-0 up. And then um, Bayern Munich end up coming back to win 4-2. Um, they equalised thanks to two goals, 26th minute and then 44th minute from Robert Lewandowski. And then it took all the way until the 88th minute for Leon Goretzka to get um, the third goal. And then uh, Lewandowski scored his hat-trick to make it 4-2. So um, Bayern absolutely blew Dortmund away, but they were still losing for quite a lot of the match. So. 27 shots to Dortmund's four, nine shots on target to Dortmund's three, 66% possession to Dortmund's 34% possession. So that means that Bayern Munich are back on top of the table. Leipzig did overtake them, but then Bayern Munich went back to their rightful place. They are two points ahead of Leipzig. Um, it leaves Dortmund in sixth, so not an ideal place for them, but they're not too far behind. They're only one point behind Leverkusen and four points behind Frankfurt in fourth. So. Still plenty of time for Dortmund, but a good comeback for uh, for Bayern, especially being down 2-0 um, so early on. Um, so moving on to the Premier League, um, Burnley won, Arsenal won. Um, Burnley continued to be defensively sound. Um, there was quite a contentious uh, penalty. The uh, ringing of um, no error penal from the uh, Mexico um Netherlands incident in 2014 reared its head again. Um, 
another um, handball that wasn't given um, contentiously. Whether or not that should have been a penalty, it seems to depend on which side of the fence you sit. Um, but Burnley fans will definitely say it wasn't a penalty penalty because <laughs> it would have gone against them. But Aubameyang scored in the sixth minute and Chris Wood scored in the 39th. Very even match, uh, 59 to 41% possession in Arsenal's favour. Arsenal had 15 shots to uh, Burnley's nine. Uh, Burnley, meanwhile, had five of those shots on target to Arsenal's three. So a very close match. Um, both sides could really have done with the full three points, but uh, Burnley will take any points that they can get, especially with some of the other results that happened in and around them in the table. Um, so moving on to the next one, Southampton finally get a win after many, 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 many matches without, let's see. So yeah, so loss, loss, draw, loss, 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 loss. So they get their first win since the FA Cup third round and the first win since uh, in the Premier League since they beat Liverpool on January the 4th. Um, and they beat Sheffield United. So um, Sheffield United were up for it. It was by no means a, uh, a whitewash from Southampton. 51% to 49% possession. Uh, 15 shots for Southampton, eight, on tar uh, eight for Sheffield. Seven on target for Southampton, two on target for uh, Sheffield. Now, Sheffield United could really have done with the points, um, especially with some of the results around that area of the table. But they're not entirely out of it. It is just looking very unlikely that they're going to survive, unfortunately. Um, so with James Ward Prowse with a penalty and then Che Adams in the 49th minute, putting the final nail in the coffin. Um, next match, not much to say. It was a bit of a poor draw. Aston Villa nil, Wolves nil. Even on possession, 51 to 49 in Wolves' favour. 10 shots to 9 uh, in Wolves' favour and then 2 on target and 1 on target in Wolves' favour. So... Um, doesn't really help either side, both stay where they are, neither in danger of relegation, but could really have done with a win to help get them closer to Europe. Now, Aston Villa do still have those two games in hand that I keep mentioning, and if they win, they will go level on points with Everton. So they've still got still got a chance to get into Europe, but um, they could have done with at least the three points to, to help them out there. Um, Leicester City 2, Brighton 1, Leicester end their... Uh, their run of unfortunate results that they've been on. Um, Brighton did start quite brightly. They uh, they went 1-0 up thanks to Adam Alana in the 10th minute. Then Kelechi Iheanacho, um equalised and then Daniel Lamarty in the 87th minute uh, won it for uh, for Leicester. Um, Leicester had all the possession, 64 to 36% possession. Relatively even on shots, 8 to 7 in Leicester's favour and then 4 on target to 2 in Leicester's favour. Um, so that meant that Leicester did overtake Manchester United until Sunday. Um, and they remain in third for now on 53 points. Um, Brighton are in 17th. They are level on points with Fulham. Um, they do have a game in hand. Um, and they're one point behind Newcastle, four points behind Burnley. They've been dragged into a relegation battle that they did not want to get dragged into. So um, West Brom nil, Newcastle nil. Uh, awful result for both teams, really. Um, West Brom had the shots 13 to 9. Newcastle had the shots on target 5 to 3. Present, uh, possession 53 to 47%. Um, so West Brom remain in 19th on 18 points. They're still six points behind Fulham, six points behind Brighton, and uh, no, sorry, eight points, because <laughs> I was looking at the 26. Eight points behind Fulham, eight points behind Brighton, nine points behind Newcastle. Um, Newcastle remain three points behind Burnley. Very precarious down at the bottom. Very, very close between West Ham and you'd have to say that Burnley and Southampton are in there. Burnley is looking a lot better off because they are on 30 points. However, Newcastle and Brighton have games in hand. So I we'll have to see how that goes. Um, next match. So um had a bit of a, an upset here. Liverpool nil, Fulham 1. Uh, thanks to Mario Lamina, a great goal. Awful defending from uh, Mohamed Salah. Um, just let it, allowed himself to get completely bodied and just stood there, not doing anything, and Lamina arrowed it into the bottom corner. Um, yeah, great performance all round from Fulham. Got to mention uh, the captain, Anderson. He had a great defensive uh, performance. Um, Liverpool had 16 shots to Fulham's 10. 
Uh, both teams only had three on target. Liverpool had the possession, 64 to 36%. But what do we always say? Possession does not win your matches. So um, very, very well, uh, well played from Fulham. And this could be the result that saves them because they are, as I've said, they're level with Brighton and they've got the momentum now beating Liverpool. I mean, so we'll have to see where this takes Fulham. Liverpool drop into eighth. Uh, they are three points behind Everton, uh, two points behind Tottenham and only three points ahead of Aston Villa and Aston Villa have two games in hand. So not looking good on the red side of Merseyside there. Um, and then we move into the big match of the weekend, the Manchester derby. Manchester City nil, Manchester United 2. As I said, no bias, but it was a great weekend of football, honestly. <laughs> honestly, no bias. Um, Manchester United played very, very well. Um, yes, Manchester City had more shots, 23 of them, but only six of them were on target. Manchester United were a lot more clinical, eight shots with six on target, scored two goals. Um, could, should arguably have been three, but Anthony Martial scuffed a, an opportunity, sent it right to Edison. Um, and Manchester City had the possession, 66 to 34. But Manchester United had a job and they performed it admirably. They went there, they shut up shop. City had barely any chances. The chances that they did have, Dean Henderson uh, took care of, no problems. And yeah, with the likes of Bruno Fernandes, at Bruno, Kevin De Bruyne and um, Gabriel Jesus and other players in their ranks, their defence have been performing so well, Ruben Diaz and John Stones, and Manchester United just unlocked. Solskjaer just seems to have the uh, the magic formula to beat Pep Guardiola. So um, he this is the third match, um, third away match in a row where uh, where he's beaten City. So can't really fault him there. Um, but a good day all round. Manchester is as it always has been is red. <laughs> um, Tottenham four, Crystal Palace one. Um, Gareth Bale has finally found his form. He scored that goal in, uh, against Burnley, and now he scored two more against Crystal Palace. Um, Harry Kane scoring two goals, him and Son combining admirably. Um, I think they still they're still the best uh, um, combination duo, at least in the Premier League, if not even across all of Europe at the moment. Um, and. I, with the two assists, it took him up to 14 assists for the season. So, great season for Harry Kane. Great performance from Gareth Bale. Um, Christian Benteke got a, uh, a consolation goal in the 45th minute. Um, so, but yeah, great performance from Tottenham. A great home performance. They had the possession, 64% to 35%. 12 shots to 5 and 5 on target to 1. So, that takes them up to 7th. Um, as I mentioned, they have leapfrogged Liverpool. Um they're only three points behind West Ham, who are in fifth, and they're only five points behind Chelsea in fourth. So getting very close, looking a lot better than they were a couple of weeks ago. Is their season saved? Only time will tell, but they're definitely in a better position. And to have uh, Gareth Bale firing on all cylinders, along with Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son, they're looking like a very dangerous prospect at the moment. Um, Chelsea 2, Everton 0. Um, Chelsea thoroughly deserved it, even though if you look at it, so Ben Godfrey on goal and a penalty, which I'm not sure. I didn't see the penalty, so I can't speak for certain. But um, but they were good for the money. They had 66% possession to Everton's 34. 19 shots to Everton's 7 and 9 on target to Everton's 1. Um, not a performance you would have expected from the Everton that we've seen all season. But then again, this Thomas Tuchel side has completely uh, changed from, uh, from Frank Lampard's side. So um, a great performance from Chelsea and it moves them into the top four. So they'll be very happy with that, moves them into the Champions League places and um, puts them in a very good position for the rest of the season. We'll have to see where it takes them now. And then the final match was uh, West Ham 2, Leeds United 0. A great performance from West Ham. Um, Leeds did have the edge. Um, they had the possession, 66 to 34. They had the shots, 17 to 6, but only two of them were on target to West Ham's five. And West Ham were just the more clinical. Jesse Lingard and Craig Dawson. And Jesse Lingard also missed a penalty, so it could have been 3-0. Um, so, yeah, great performance from West Ham. They've completely turned around under David Moyes this season. And um, they remain in fifth. Um, only two points behind Chelsea and only five points behind Leicester City. So, could be seeing the Hammers on a European tour. So, that'll be very interesting. 
Um, so yeah, so that's my review of the weekend's football. Um, I will be back with you either later today or first thing in the morning with a preview of the midweek matches. We've got some Champions League, Europa League, a couple of other league matches. So, but in the meantime, hope you're all staying safe, keeping out of trouble. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And until next time, to wrap it up. <laughs>